Hello. Uh, yes, uh, Aditya, you are not visible. Your your video is not visible, Aditya. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Oh, okay, okay. Now I I can see you. Uh, so, uh, good evening you today, Aditya. I'm fine, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And uh, is it very cold in Lucknow? Uh, sir, actually, I'm in Delhi. Oh, you are in Delhi. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm avoiding falling ill. Oh, That's okay. Why. When is your when is your interview? Uh, I've still not got my dates. Oh, okay. So it will be sometime in March. So you have a lot of time to continue your uh, preparations. Very good. Yes, sir. Now yes, in sir. Lucknow, I came came across an area called residency. Yes, sir. Why they call it residency? Uh, sir, uh, there is a place called Residency, I think. It is actually yes. a historical place, but I am currently unable to recall uh, the exact significance of that. A meeting of G20 is being held there, if I can recall correctly. Okay, okay. Now, uh, your address says that uh, you live in Eldeco city. Yes, sir. What is this Eldeco? Uh, sir, Eldeco is actually a real estate uh, uh, company which builds uh, such projects and then uh, either uh, gives them on lease or uh, transfers it. Oh, okay, okay, fine. You are from IIT Kanpur. Y yes, sir. And uh, how many IITs are there now? Sir, I can recall thirty-one uh, from the from the last I read. Al almost one uh, in each state. Uh, sir, there would be a few left out in northeast, I think. Uh, okay. In the in the rest of India, I think there are actually uh, one in each state. Is that a good move? Uh, so many IITs. What will happen to the quality of uh, education? I am not talking about the content. I am talking about the delivery, people. Yes, sir. So, so in uh, my opinion, opening too many IITs does uh, dilute the brand of uh, IIT, as we have seen even with the placements as well as. Uh, the various other aspects on which the IITs are uh, ranked. However, in my opinion, since the IIT already is a bigger brand, so opening too many IITs and providing them the necessary infrastructure, as well as uh, at, uh, the appropriate student placement offices, etc., uh, can help us uh, build much more uh, diversity and much more democratization of the education sector. Okay. Now, I'm told uh, one of the IITs uh, has come out with a very novel uh, uh, degree program wherein uh, you can enroll online and there is no age limit and there is no uh, JE qualification qualifications things like that no entrance exam I mean this is something very very uh, revolutionary what they have done um, have you heard about it uh, sorry sir I'm unable to recall which IIT has started but I have heard about this yeah, this IIT Madras has started this. Okay, okay, sir. Thank Program, you. This is thrown open to the citizens. Not, okay. uh, not um, uh, what shall I say, the bright sparks in the uh, educational arena, which used to attract a lot of uh, students to the IIT, but this is thrown open for anybody and everybody. They can enroll and uh, take credit uh, as they go and um, uh, probably the fee structure is also very, very low. As such, the IIT fee structure is uh, one of the lowest in the country. The type of education they give and um, the fee they charge is, um, I mean, not at all comparable, I would say. You also yes. worked in, uh, you also worked in uh, Goldman Sachs for about uh, an year, an year plus. Yes, sir. What was your experience like working in a international organization like Goldman Sachs? Yes, sir. So, sir, the most important uh, thing was uh, learning about the teamwork and also acquiring the technical skills which are uh, related to the finance sector, spe specifically related to the consumer banking sector where I worked in uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, apart from that, it gives us an exposure to a wide variety of people and a diversity which uh, I had not known before because I interacted a lot with uh, foreign nationals as well. Uh, apart from that, it also teaches us, uh, it also taught me one of the basic differences uh, between the corporate culture and the government culture uh, that I've seen from my father's work, whereby we see that uh, there is a bit more interaction between the managers and uh, the employees. 
uh, on an informal scale, which leads to better uh, development of bonds. So that was another important aspect I learned there. You mentioned about your father's work. What was his work like? Uh, so he is assistant audit officer in the accountant general audit. Oh, in the, the AG's office. Yes. In the AG's office. Okay. Yes. okay. You've been to that office? Uh, I have not been inside. I've been uh, till the gate of the office. Okay. Um, uh, what is the major difference uh, between AG's office and other offices? Uh, sir, could you please... Uh, uh, says, including, you to... including the state government and the central government offices. There is some unique difference between the AG's office and other offices. So, sir, uh, from the funding point of view, we see that uh, the AG's office is actually the expenditure is charged on the consolidated fund of uh, India, while for the other offices, other state government or central government offices, uh, it is very likely that most of them are charged are not charged on the ex consolidated fund of India. And so there is a difference in the independence. Apart from that, I also saw that the infrastructure of that particular office was uh, like top class. While we don't see that kind of infrastructure in uh, most of the uh, DM's office or uh, places like that. Have you ever seen a uh, public interfacing in the AGS office? Do they deal with public? Uh, sir, I, I don't think they deal with the public to the best. Yeah, of that is the that is the major difference. All other government offices, you will, the moment you enter the office, you will find the crowd of visitors standing in at an entry pass, thousands of problems. But here is one office which doesn't have a problem from the public. Yes, sir. Uh, I would say that it is not actually a problem uh, if there is a public interface. Mm -hmm. It is just that it requires a bit more of management and. Uh, a bit more of empathy because you are working with people who might not be very well conversant with the with how the place operates. So you you call, you don't want to call it public problem. You want to call it public management. Yes, sir. But then uh, management means it should be solved, but it is not solved. Many of the issues of the public. Why? So, sir, in my opinion, they keep going. They keep going to that office again and again and again. Why? that is happening in government. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, in my opinion, uh, the, one of the major reasons is the red tapeism, which exists at many places still in the bureaucracy. Apart from that, there are many times uh, some technicalities in the uh, process, which the uh, people in general do not understand. And that is why they the files get, uh, uh, like they get stuck at certain places where they should not have been stuck if the process would have been smoother and uh, the technicalities would have been a bit less. So these are the major challenges that I see. You seem to be supporting the current nature of work in government in the sense you talk about the tapism and you're also talking about the processes which the public don't understand. That is why there is delay. Okay. How do we overcome these two things? One is tapism, The other one is the processes. Which are not, so, yes, how do we overcome? Sir, in my opinion, uh, one of the major things which can help in this domain uh, would be the uh, digitalization of all the processes as well as all the files that are involved in various processes. After that, to speed up the work, we can actually have a mechanism like uh, whereby we specify uh, how much days uh, a particular file was stuck with which officer. So that would increase the accountability and even uh, create a moral pressure on the particular officer to uh, clear the file as soon as possible. Very Even good. We very, can... good. Yes. very good. You have you have given uh, both answers correctly. First, you talked about digitization. Then you talked about fixing the time limits. It has got a name. It is called time bound disposal. In th th thank you, sir. Time bound disposal. If the issue of a passport, it should be done in forty five days. If you have a driving license, it should be done in thirty days. So, uh, registering the FIR, it should be done instantaneously. There is no time, it has to be done then and there. You see, like that, time one is prescribing and following it. Maybe many just have it in the notice board. This time yes. But adhering to that, 
See, seeing to it that this is followed. That is number one. Number two is digitization. Yes, digitization will speed up the processes so that the red tape is totally eliminated. It can be done. And of course, it's being done in many places. Have you come across um, uh, digitized station in the processes in dealing with uh, public uh, compliance, public grievances, public issues anywhere in a government office, state or center? Uh, sir, I can recall uh, uh, we recently changed our address in Aadhaar and that was done completely online. Apart from that, the Aadhaar card was also ordered online. So these are the two things that I am able to recall. Good. How do you book your railway ticket about 10 years back? Sir, I am unable to recall how it was done 10 years back. Well, you have to go and stand in the queue. Okay. You don't have to. In the yes, world, there is no queue. You do it immediately. You, yes, get a, you get a dashboard where uh, the availability, train wise, the date wise, everything is there. And uh, see, there you'll have to wait for your turn. You may not even know whether it is available, the ticket. And by the time you reach the counter, that uh, counter clerk will say, Sorry, there is no vacant berth available. So you have wasted your time standing. Right. Those things have become things of the past, courtesy digitization. Good. Yes. Now you have an interesting um, interest, I should say. That is the study of dinosaurs. Yes, sir. How did you develop this? And uh, what is the takeaway from this study as far as uh, Aditya is concerned? So, sir, uh, uh, regarding the question on how I developed this hobby, this actually developed at a very young age. So uh, I was around in nursery or KG when uh, I saw the movie Godzilla. And I mistook the animal as a dinosaur. And due to the magnificence of that animal, I got attracted towards this field. Later on, however, I learned that that was not a dinosaur. And actual dinosaurs are present in movies like Jurassic Park, etc. Uh, as far as my learnings are concerned, I think that the most important learning, which was even uh, shown in the UN General Assembly, was that uh, dinosaurs got extinct, but we don't have to. Uh, we can. We, we have the intelligence to actually control our actions as well as uh, to a bit control the uh, nature around us. So we can actually uh, prevent our extinction and uh, also the that of the animals around us. Okay. So what do you think are the major reasons for extinction of the dinosaurs? Sir, uh, the, the most uh, widely accepted uh, reason was the asteroid impact theory, which said that uh, an asteroid landed in the UK, Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And from there on, it cascaded a series of events which led to the uh, extinction of the dinosaurs. Have you traveled anywhere outside India? Uh, yes, sir. I've traveled to New York once. New York. Uh, was there. How many years back? Uh, it was in 2019. 19. Oh, very recently. About two, three years back. Yes, sir. What impressed you the most in New York? Where did you stay in New York? Which part of New York? Uh, in Manhattan, I was staying Manhattan. in Manhattan. Oh, okay. Oh, that is the most lively place. Okay. What impressed you the most in New York? So the two major things I can recall currently are uh, the day-to-day -day life, which included a lot of uh, uh, management. Like uh, even the pedestrians did not cross the road uh, if the pedestrian red light was on. While in India, we see that uh, the traffic rules are violated very often. So that kind of civic sense was one, one thing which uh, attracted me. Apart from that, in that uh, particular area, the uh, the attitude of the people was such that everyone took a uh, metro or a subway, which they called at that place, even if uh, that person was earning a million dollars uh, a year. So that was another thing which impressed me about that place. What is that due to? Sorry, sir? Yeah, even a person who is earning a million dollars, he goes by the tube or the subway. In some places in the US, they call it the tube. In some places, they call it the metro. Some places, they call it the subway, things like that. What makes them travel like that? In India, you can't imagine. You can't dream of that. A millionaire traveling by the metro. Yes, sir. What sir, uh, in, in US or in New York particularly? 
sir in my opinion one of the major reasons is the colonial mentality like we have been liberated from the colonial mentality uh, very recently while us got eliminated from that uh, mentality more than 200 years before us so here we tend to associate elitism with materialism while there it is a bit less although there are uh, luxury cars etc running on the roads but still people prefer to tra uh, travel by metro and walk uh, a, a smaller distance while in india we don't see that apart from that another major factor is uh, a bit of poverty present in india which is more than what is present in usa so we see that the rickshaw pullers etc are cheaply available while in us we don't see that even the uh, the cabs etc are cheaply available there the cab rate was also very high so these are the two factors i can think of okay what are the major impediments uh, which we experience uh, towards the economic growth of india what is the growth rate in india today the economy is growing at what rate sir i can recall approximately at uh, 6 or 7% i am yeah, yeah you are right, you're right. Okay. what are the impediments still which we face which can make a faster growth or a better growth than this major impediment sir, yes sir. so sir uh, in the recent time we saw uh, a major impediment being inflation especially the imported inflation which uh, occurred due to uh, the dependence on oil so currently we are we have about 85% dependence on imported oil so that is one major impediment which i see because we, we don't have oil? are we importing oil or crude we are importing crude oil sir uh, you you have sorry. to be specific when you talk about oil yeah okay yes, sir. sorry sir uh, uh, apart from that because, i'll tell you you must keep it in the background india is one of the biggest refiners in the world uh, yes sir uh, right i actually uh, did not use the right words okay right yeah. go ahead go ahead hmm. apart from that the another major impediment i see is the presence of skilling and education so we see that even in the recent uh, india skills report it said that around 5% of uh, the labor currently is formally skilled and out of the skilled labor only 46% is employable so these are uh, two another major challenges uh, which i see apart from that we have a lot of dependence on agriculture like more than 50% like around 45 or 50% of the workforce is engaged in agriculture which leads to a lot of disguised unemployment so i think that we need to move that away from agriculture and put it into manufacturing uh, for which even the government is taking some steps so these are the three major challenges i see you you mean to say you relocate uh, those uh, unemployed agricultural dependent people into industrial sectors yes so i see that there is a lot of disguised unemployment where more people are uh, allocated to agriculture at present than are actually needed so we need to give them the right skills to uh, get them into the industrial sector where even the pay would be better and the problem of disguised unemployment would not be there but then this problem will continue with more uh, mechanization in agriculture and the more uh, uh, collective farming contract farming it will still be there you will have surplus labor generated from the agricultural sector Uh, yes sir i think that uh, the problem can exist but uh, our best shot is to take as many steps as we can for example in the in the uh, things that you mentioned we currently are lagging a lot behind in the food processing sector so that can be uh, one of the major components which can absorb the those labor as well as uh, generate demand in that particular segment itself okay so, good that, that's a good answer you uh, when you feel that there is surplus labor available in the agricultural sector you try to develop allied industries which is food processing which again thank you comes out of the agriculture sector so that they remain in the the general area of food and agriculture okay good right aditya you wanted to leave at 6 o'clock i was told isn't it yes sir i have actually a technical session for electrical. okay fine then um, the interview is over now i will get on to the feedback as far as your interview is concerned thank you sir you have time uh, for your uh, uh, final performance test a few uh, background information on the upsc's uh, personality test you see people would have told you but i want to emphasize again the same point 
the up is uh, interview or personality test it is not a question answer session it is not a program to test your knowledge you have already been tested in the preliminary and mains as far as your knowledge is concerned but here the way they ask you may think that they are trying to find out the answer correct they are trying to find out the answer but they want to see how you are presenting that answer that's very important presentation is very very important as far as the personality test is concerned so within that allotted time of 35 to 50 minutes it won't exceed more than 50 minutes and it would not be less than 30 to 40 minutes you should try and give as much information as possible and uh, in an ornamented way in a presentable way so that your answer turns out to be the best answer we talked about um, the eco economy's growth you were right when you gave the data yes it is 6% plus you should also add sir this is the highest in the world one of the highest in the world even developing nations are uh, staggering between 2 and 3% yes sir it, it is the most remarkable and appreciable thing which india has gone into but there are certain impediments like uh, you talked about labor you talked about education that is all good so there is bound to be a question on indian economy and could be questions on the tension which india is facing in the border western border eastern border yes try and assess that situation and keep the answer ready i'll give you about 15 flash points on which they can ask questions one is the tension in the border yes sir they say tension in the border it is both the land and the maritime border in the western border we have tension due to terrorism in the eastern border we have tension due to land dispute china is climbing our territory yes sir you go further bangladesh we have problem refugee problem we have smart problem but same thing the refugees rocking car refugees trying to enter into india or smuggling see wherever there is no tension there is a smuggling which we have to stop or there is a migrant problem refugee problem and you come to the maritime border yes we have problem drugs the gujarat coast the maharashtra coast or you come to the south there is a fisherman problem with uh, sri lanka yes sir tell you a flash point try and analyze 360 degrees keep the answer ready yes you sir say, what are the problems in our border very often people will talk about china and pakistan no our border is larger including maritime border you can yes, say sir. time we are peaceful but we also have problem with drugs piracy fishing yes yes sir. see very often people fail because these important points they miss out they don't talk about the maritime border see the question was border he didn't specify land border if they say land border yes you can talk about china you can talk about pakistan so you have to be very attentive and try to impress them how do you impress by giving the full answer the full yes. answer 360 degrees coverage which i explained to you now for any question look at the 360 degree international another flash point is ukraine why the war is still going on what is the way out can you can you give me in one sentence what is the way out to end the war sir uh, i think that uh, countries like india who have uh, a good relations with both sides should try to mediate and uh, bring them both on the uh, talking table okay you get you give a very long sentence but, but you gave the answer that is dialogue bring them to dialogue which is not happening if yes, we sir. come to a dialogue table yes you can they can take uh, the help of countries like india who are who is a well wisher of both ukraine and russia yes dialogue this is not happening you see if you give that type of answer they will be very happy i want you to give that type of presentation you are fairly knowledgeable you are able to um, tell me everything and what i want is try and analyze these uh, flash points 
you you know the type of questions which they ask if you go through some of these internet uh, this thing they will be able to tell you the previous year's interview there are a lot of transcripts uploaded Just, yes sir, right it could be from your daf it could be from your uh, iit it could be from international uh, current affairs and things like that it could be anything but the way you capture the information and present to them that is very important which requires a lot of practice try to use as many keywords as possible there could be questions on yeah. uh, covid 19 what are the Pandemic. keywords to use uh, pandemic and then vaccines uh, are the thing we should use apart from that lockdowns so we have to talk about that what what happened no, because most of that. Im- most important thing you have um, omitted social distancing oh yes sir covid appropriate protocol covid appropriate you know like i want you to get into the habit of using keywords see yes, thinking at that only whether um aditya is current in his knowledge not just not current in his knowledge current is to capture all these keywords which are very often used not only in india over the world so yes, for any platform try and get hold of these keywords which will enhance your presentation which will value your presentation. this is these are the points from my side if you have any questions or if you want to ask any clarification you can ask me now uh, sir uh, one of my questions uh, would be like uh, since we had a 20 minute session what do you think would be my strengths and what do you think would be my weaknesses okay um uh, the strength is uh, you are uh, trying to be too brief good they want only brief answers you, you are not beating around the bush as presentation is concerned okay um weakness is you are not smiling at all even while talking about new york you didn't smile see the moment i think of new york i get a smile because such a lively place day and night, 24 hours you go to the times square look at the life throbbing yeah. pulsating life yes sir you must people okay people be full of life any stranger they will say hi yes sir right even if you pay they will not say hi in india <laughs> it's a difference between indians and americans yes sir right you see that is what you should bring out in your presentations talk okay. avoid negative of course you didn't bring but i want the um, uh, body language is very important uh, aditya your facial expression is very important during the personal it is a personality test you must smile okay you are serious yes, serious look no 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 not before the cc board they are not here to reject you they are here to select you yes sir want you to compel them to select you how will you compel by your presentation by your personality yes sir now you learned the tricks yes sir to be the presentation show your personality you will get into success mode it's very easy it is not difficult yes sir uh, one more question sir about yeah. my my speaking so uh, two three questions like am i speaking fast am i using the right words and am i able to sound like a confident speaker uh um, you are confident number one or uh, uh, you are not talking uh, fast and you are using right word but i want you to use better words yes sir yes sir, definitely right word and better word yes sir, yes sir, definitely uh, which i told you the keywords are the better words yes sir to, to go through this recording today yes sir find out how you were whether you are fast whether you were using right word what word i can substitute by instead of that word instead of that sentence try and do that exercise if you do that exercise it will help you in future sessions and in the final interview yes. in upsc do this as a practice don't it's a serious exercise which you have to do i keep advising all the candidates say yes, today's recording keep it as a model and try to improve Yes, sir. Today's performance you improve. I am sure 
the telltale results will be there on that final day. Okay, I'll do that, sure. You start from today's rec interview recordings. You learn a lot. You learn a lot, okay? Yes, sir, definitely, sir. If there are no other questions. Uh, one yeah. last question. Sir. Yes. Uh, my second hobby is about relationship dynamics and the evolutionary science behind them. So mm. what kind of questions can I expect on that according to you? Well, uh, it, it is a very, very high sounding word. They may ask, what is this? <laughs> relationship dynamics. You may have to explain in brief what is uh, relationship dynamics. Okay. Uh, apart from that? Um, other than that, you see, they will not devote much attention on the DAF related item. They will straight away go into current affairs. Economy. Okay. Problems. What do the agricultural laborers face in India? What problem? Migrant problem during COVID. Unrelated. Yes. We never thought that we may have a migrant problem in country during the COVID. Yes, sir. Try and think about it. And are we adequately equipped not to have such migrant issue in future in case there is a pandemic? Okay. Okay. I'll think about it. And uh, emerging VR tech, how it, you can use it in governance, not in education. Yes, it can be used effectively in education, in governance. Okay. I'll prepare an answer. Yes, VR tech application areas in governance. If you give that, will be really good. Okay. And there, actually, there, yes. there are works going on in use of VR in governance. Okay, okay. Existing works. Okay. Uh, anything else, sir, you would like to add? Mm, no, that's all uh, from my side. And uh, if you have anything, you can always get in touch with me. Any, any as you or do the preparation further the next two months time and uh, you want to consult me on something, you are free to contact me. Madam okay. uh, Madhavi will give my WhatsApp number, email, you can always reach me. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, right on. For that. All the best to Aditya. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank Bye. you so much.